recording expressly to your heart. The very first hit single for Gambo and Huff by the Soul Survivors, of course. Today's session was, let me use the word marvelous. It was great. Uh, today on the track, uh, obviously Dave was sick but uh, Pete Donnelly on bass, I'm playing rhythm, Greg Davis, uh, Wally Smith on the keys, and Mr. Fred Berman playing some kick-ass percussion. Charlie's here, what a treat, what an honor to be with Charlie playing the song that was a single for him. Um, and we're doing it with Patty Smythe, which is again, another honor. Charlie and Patty sound great together. You never know before you start how things are gonna meld, how things are gonna work, but it's, it's just magic. Well, having Patty on this is, for me, it's an incredible feeling because one, for my ears, she's the greatest singer I ever heard. She just brings like a sense of, of vibrance and a sense of rock and roll to, to the music that she's done over the years. She's the real deal. She's the real deal. When you hear her sing, you say, oh wow, th this, is, this is something. It's a very rhythmic song to sing and I really like rhythm, like counting and stuff. So. The thing that's interesting and challenging and great about the song is that you have to sing it in this pocket of a, a rhythm, and every line is rhythmic. Well, you know, um, I've resisted it for a long time. I really didn't know who should sing the song, but Dave suggested Patty, and it was like, bingo, that's the one. Female voice, she's bad, she can do it. Well, Charlie, is an interesting fellow. You know that he has Philadelphia musical history, so he's a man who's been part of the music scene way back at the beginning when stuff really kicked off. It's just a wonderful experience to get to know him and having worked with both him and Richie together off and on over the years was just great. I consider them Philly musical royalty. <laughs> that time I had the stuff that was really like on my turntable like the Beatles, Hendrix, Zeppelin and you know all that kind of stuff that I was really kind of learning and then there was the stuff that was on the radio that was part of my background too all that when I think of all the great like you know Jackson 5 and Stevie Wonder and all the really good uh, Motown stuff Aretha and Expressway is, is right, it, like, I thought it was coming out of that same bag. I didn't realize then that it was a Philly, you know, oriented kind of a song. Um, I remember listening to it when I was a kid. I remember uh, listening to the, 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 the traffic in the beginning and going, I've heard that traffic before, <laughs> even though I, I hadn't. But to me, oh, it had to be from Philly because the song was out of Philly. This song, you know, growing up, I always knew it. I always loved it. And it was kind of like mind blowing to be able to do these in the pocket shows and get to know the Ingway brothers and, and, and actually you know, didn't expect to be here doing a version of it now. You know? I know this song well. It's kind of a hard song not to know well. I guess what, what struck me was like how kind of psychedelic it gets in that other part. I never quite thought about that. I always felt more like of an R&B kind of tune, but it's, it, it absolutely hints at that sort of psychedelic rock era in the, the bridge section. It's much too crowded, too crowded, much too crowded, too crowded, too crowded. Too crowded. pocket we don't try to mirror the original we capture the essence but then bring something different to it in the track we were running it down and Dave was trying to figure out how to emulate the hi-hat what to do and then all of a sudden he said let's forget the hi-hat I won't play it and then I said wait a minute 
Freddie Berman, awesome percussionist, is playing tambourine today. Let's give Freddie the down in the verse and the shake in the chorus. There's this boom, ba, 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 boom, ba. And on the record, he's playing a hi-hat. He's mirroring the bass drum. Dun, da, 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 da. And the tambourine, if you listen to the record, is like playing almost like the lead. So I use the pad where you're not really hearing it. I'm playing the pad as a hi-hat, playing a snare drum with flams and the bass drum. I'm going boom, boom, da, ba, 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 boom, boom, ba. And Freddie's playing along. The drum pattern works best without the hi-hat. So to give it the pulse during those other sections where it's just, you know, he's just playing the ride cymbal, we just added the tambourine instead. So we always try to pay uh, homage, pay respect to, to the original track, and then maybe we could do something to make it, you know, a little different so that it's not a carbon copy. And then listening to the original track, I think it's, you know, basically just one guitar part. And of course, I was here with Cliff Hillis today, and we're figuring out, all right, what, you know, what, what are we going to do so that we're not, you know, stepping on each other or stepping on the, the space for the vocals. So we were just kind of going off, and I just did a, a little peel off on that, basically quoting that, but then slightly harmonizing it at the end. And then the ting, ting, like the, the octave cut that you would get in a like a Motown kind of thing. I kind of went a little bit off of that, hopefully in a supportive way. So just looking at the original parts and trying to figure out a way to dovetail something else along with it, it just give it a slightly different flavor. The song is all about that bass line, right? It's that do, 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 do. I mean, come on, it's like it's in you. Now there's two started to shout you would love and affection come on look in my direction let's see it was about 51 uh, years ago when we, when we originally did it um, and I was thinking naturally thinking about Richie um, thinking about how he would enjoy himself here today with Fatty doing that song he, you know, he, he would love it but uh, you know here we are and uh, here we are I just think that Charlie and Richie are just a big part of this music scene down here. They kind of just were there in that moment when I was, when I kind of stepped out. And I feel like they just were such great singers. I really thought that they should have done a lot more. I met Patty when she was about 16. And um, she was a friend of um, some of the guys in my band at the time. And um, we, we just all hung out together. You know, I was around, but I was much younger than everybody. So I didn't even know that Charlie and Richie remembered meeting me back then. So, and then I was down in Philly. I would come down with him to South Street. And we would just see each other, but I, we didn't, they were, you know, I was a dumb kid to them in a way, I think, at first. And they didn't know I sang either. Like nobody did then. I kept it uh, on the down low. A lot of people felt bad later, but I'm like, I was totally keeping it a secret. Like, I wouldn't sing in front of anyone yet. Took a while for that. Well, it's great because I, my personal history with Patty is that we were in the Frank's Soda commercial together when, in 1983. <laughs> is it Frank's? Thanks. And I was the guy like playing guitar with the headphones and Neil Simpkins was in it. Take us along when it's time to play. So I remember her from that day. I don't think I've seen her since then. And then she became Scandal and all that and all those hits. I'm like, wow, Patty, you know? And then to hear like those two coming together, I think, oh yeah, Patty's got a great voice. I can't wait to hear the two of them together. And so it's, it's going on right now. On the expressway to your heart, that expressway is not the best way. Much too crowded. Too crowded. Much too crowded. Too crowded. So crowded. Too crowded. Much, 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 much too, too crowded. crowded. Much too crowded. Oh, too crowded. No room for me. Much, 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 much too crowded. Ooh, I'm trying to get oh, you more. Much too crowded. Much, 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 much too crowded.
today is really special. As I, I, when I started in the pocket with Dallin, I always thought this would be a song we could do. You know, this was kind of what motivated me to do the, the beauty of, of what Philadelphia is all about, you know, because Charlie and Richie, two blue-eyed soul singers from Philadelphia, and, um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, legendary music that came out of Philly, but this one really, in a lot of ways, got things started. It's an honor to, um, to be one of the essential songs of Philadelphia, and, um, and, and it deserves to be there, you know. I'm really glad we finally got to do it. I think it's great what Dave's doing, trying to make these archives and put this down. And uh, I mean, I wanted to do this for Charlie. I know that he's been really sad since Richie passed. And so I'm just glad that I could be here and maybe bring a little love to the city of brotherly love. <laughs> uh, listen, I want to thank everybody that has supported In The Pocket. I want to thank the, the crew, the, the you know, Dallin, Steve Aceto, everybody that has been involved. You know, the, the, the project has been a labor of love for me and thank you for supporting. It can't happen without you all. Too crowded, too, I'm just the expressway. Do, 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 do. You can use that little clip in the middle. It's much too crowded, it's much too crowded. Expressway to your heart. Oh, what a great song. What a fantastic song.